Hi. How can I help? That's plus three on the body. It's basically... Yeah. Hi, Kevin, can you hear me? <laughs> Obviously, make sure that there's still some background there, that that, that feels not filling it all completely. And we're live. Woohoo! Right, that's it. Put the camera on, swap across. Morning, everybody. Welcome along to the virtual photography show. Uh, for those that don't know me, hello. My name is Gavin Hoey. I am an Olympus ambassador for Olympus UK. I'm the portrait ambassador, technically. And uh, I'm also a photographer, photographic educator, and weirdly, a live streamer. Not something I thought I would say last year but there we go that's what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about live streaming and how i set my kit up how it's worked for me within my business my tips and tricks on how to make it work for you and your business if that's what you're doing and um, just pass on some information the best i can for the next 40 minutes now this is really strange for me because i'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to these things and i've got not much control over this, so hopefully you can see and hear me. If you can, there is a comments box in the right corner, but which which way is right? That that way, that way. Um, pop a uh, click on the uh, the box, put a comment in, say hello. Let me know that uh, I'm not here on my own. It could just be me, but I'm not actually here on my own because I have the awesome Sam who is on the Super Switcher. Say hello, Sam. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Have we got anyone here? Is it just? Um, uh, yeah, we've got people here. Yeah. Great. We've got um, Kirsty's here. Hey, Kirsty. Uh, Steve. Uh, we've got Terry. Uh, say hi, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And um, let us know if you've got any questions, and I will try to get to as many as possible. Yeah, this is an interactive session. So uh, please pop some questions in as we're going along because hey, it makes it more fun for me and makes it more fun for you guys as well. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of buttons I need to press down here to make things work. Okay, Sam, jump over to my laptop. Let's get going. So my laptop, there we go. So um, I'm going to run through some stats, first of all, because we do love a bit of statistics. Well, I hope so, because that's what you're going to get. Some live streaming stats for 2019 versus 2020 for me. This is, this is what happened for my, my live streaming in 2019. I did a total of none. Absolutely no live streaming whatsoever. Everything was in the real world. Any presentations were all real world. world. Oh, this is live, isn't it? I can't even say world. Uh, how many live producing? I didn't do any live producing. And Zoom was something that you put on front of the front of your camera, I thought. So never heard of Zoom in 2019. Compared to last year, where I was in front of the camera over 30 times uh, for various different presentations and events and bits and pieces. Uh, behind the camera, live streaming producer, something I never knew existed as a job title, let alone something I would put on my CV. We did well over 20 live streaming productions backstage. And then I honestly have no idea how many Zooms, Skypes, and other bits and pieces we did. There was way too many. Let's just say way too many. And that's all part of the, the process of live streaming, whether it's something for work, whether it's something for pleasure, the technology is the same. OK, so why did we go live? Why did we go live? Uh, well, we went live uh, really because it was fun. And it's fun to do. It's good fun to do as well. So live streaming is scary. I'm not going to lie to you. The five minutes run up is terrifying. But it is great fun. You come away with a real buzz at the end of it. It's challenging, which is challenging for me. Uh, it keeps us busy. Let's face it, we've all had some spare time for the last 12 months that we didn't plan. Uh, human interaction. I get to interact with you lot. I, mean, I say there's you lot. I know there's at least three people there, so that's pretty good. There's a lot more now. Oh, so, is there? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a slight time delay for me when I'm uh, refreshing everything, but we're getting to lots and lots of people saying hi, so that's oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, is, this is fun. Uh, so yeah, you've also got a tiny little screen to see it in. So you're having a, a great prod, Sam. She's working much harder than me today. Uh, so yeah, it is. And I'm going to talk about what to do if no one's watching later on. So don't worry if you think, oh, yeah, no one's going to be watching. I will get to that. I will get to that. I really will. Um, how did it affect our business? So business for 2020 was challenging. I think like most businesses, it was a rough year. So when COVID came along, Part of my business is live. So um, camera club talks, we've done many of those through the years, trade shows, one-to-one uh, -one sessions, group workshops. 
everything cancelled. Within the space of two weeks, I lost everything. And although that's not the only bit of my business, like all businesses, we, we diversify a bit, it was enough to be quite worrying. So live streaming has been really good. It's filled the gap for time, and it's filled the gap, or at least it nearly has filled the gap financially. And looking ahead, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. So um, if, if business is your thing, if you're watching this from a business point of view, I'm not going to be covering the ins and outs of it, but it can work for you if you put the effort in. Okay, so before I go too deep into this, I want to try and just get one thing over to maybe save some people a little bit of a, uh, a nightmare of things going wrong unnecessarily. Jump back to my laptop, Sam. It's easier to show. Okay, so what I'm looking at is a speed test. Okay, so before you even consider going live, before you spend a penny on any live stream equipment or a minute of your time setting it up, head over to the internet, go to one of the testing sites, just put speed test into Google and use theirs or use speedtest.net, which is the most respected it would appear. Just type in that and test your internet speed. And what you're interested in isn't the download or the ping, it is specifically the upload. That's the only thing that you're interested in. What is your upload speed? It needs to be, Sam, can I come on this picture in picture? Can you do me? That's like, oh, she's trying to do it. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> hey, it worked. well done. Sorry. I can see her working hard. I didn't want to say anything. Bless her. She's, work, she's working so hard. It's her birthday today as well. Can I say that? Too late. I've said it. So she's working hard on her birthday. So the, the upload speed is everything. If you are going to be just doing the absolute basic, uh, just doing Zooms and Skype and things like that, then you want to be looking for an average of around about five would be my safety net. Your average speed, you can get away with a little bit less. If you're planning on doing this to Facebook or particularly YouTube, you really want to have something a little bit faster for your upload speed. I get a little bit uncomfortable if my speed drops below 10. That's kind of my safety net for me. So. Uh, I switched to using 4G, so everybody's working from home, including my family now, so my internet, which was lovely for me on my own, is now being spread amongst us. So we switched to 4G for my office, my live streaming. It's not very good for download, it's really good for upload. Okay, right. Uh, I should have another slide, here we go. So this is my little uh, world of live streaming. It works like this. You need a camera, you need a microphone, you need a box of tricks, possibly, I'll talk about that, a computer, a router to get your internet signal out. You have one of those, otherwise you wouldn't be able to watch this, and then somewhere to send it. So Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, LinkedIn, uh, all of those sorts of Skype, Teams, all of those sorts of places. In this session, I'm really only going to cover the, the front end of things, so the camera, and the audio and the box of tricks that converts it into them because everything else changes really quickly. Things that worked for Facebook Live last month don't work this month. That's, that's just how these things are. So they evolve too fast, they're too personal, and although we are available for consultations if that's really something you want to do, um, but not in a group session like this. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on to my tried and trusted kit. Let's come back to me again. It's all about me, Sam. That's good because we've had a few people ask uh, what you're videoing uh, on. So my, yeah, yeah, we're going to. Right. We are. So Steve and Rizman have asked that. Okay, Stephen, well, I, I will definitely talk about that. As this is brought to you by Olympus UK, there may be a clue there. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to cover my tried and tested kit. So the first thing is the cameras. Okay, so I am using Olympus cameras. I'm using the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, which is what you're watching me on now. And I also have an OMD EM1 Mark III. In fact, I have several uh, EM1s that we have dotted around the studio for various bits and pieces because um, I'm an Olympus ambassador. I've got access to these cameras. They work beautifully for live streaming. Actually, they are really good for live streaming. They are, they, they've never let me down. Other bits of kit have the cameras are the, the solid bit. So uh, I'm using that as my, my camera. Uh, on top of that, we need to get the cables to connect everything together. So let's run through that. So there is a micro HDMI cable out from my camera into a full-sized uh, HDMI 
there. And then I use a great big long extension. So this is, uh, I think it's a seven meter HDMI cable. Good old Amazon for that. Honestly, re weirdly, when we started doing live streaming this time last year, I had to get the HDMI cable out the back of my TV. Now I've got enough cables to literally go from my house to, to your house. I really have, it's crazy. Uh, so the problem is, HDMI cables, the longer they are, the more problematic they become. So if HDMI is the way you're going to go, it is digital. It works or it doesn't work. There's no gradual fade off in quality. It just stops and it can stop and start really quickly as well. So they, they are, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of, of technical things about them. But basically, when you go beyond about five meters, you are asking for trouble. So to connect my cables together, uh, I use, let's see, this is a little behind, mm -mm -mm, around about there. OK, something like that. Uh, hopefully, you can see that. That is a little connector that has an HDMI at both ends. And it is a signal booster. So this boosts up the signal and means that I can use much longer cables than I would do normally and still get a, a really good signal from my Olympus cameras into my computer. So signal boosters, really, really good. If you use just ordinary connectors, they don't really uh, always work. Uh, there's an input and an output, so I have to make sure I get these around the right way. So that connects between my camera and my computer. And these have proved to be, for, for 10 or 15 pounds, an absolute godsend because I can use really long HDMI cables and we don't lose signal. So I can highly recommend uh, those. So that gets my signal from my camera to my computer, but between them has to be something that can convert the information into something the computer can actually use. It's called a capture card. And capture cards, well, this is it is literally a capture card. Where is it? There it is. Lovely. So this is my original capture card that I bought back in 2014 when I thought live streaming would be really easy and cool. It was cool. It wasn't easy. So uh, I threw them away. And they were gathering dust at the beginning of 2020. I started with those. They really were awful. So we switched to something better. And if I was starting today, I would get one of these which is a little tiny USB capture card. So it has HDMI in one end, it has USB in the other end, and inside of there is all the technology to convert the signal from HDMI into something the computer can use. They are 10 to 15 to 20 pounds, tops, absolute top 20 pounds. No branding name on that. They are all randomly branded from Amazon, and they are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So that's what I would suggest. If you were starting today, you can also use Olympus's um, uh, USB uh, webcam capture software, which is completely free. Doesn't take the audio. You need to deal with that separately. And personally, I prefer the hardware. But you know, I know uh, some of my Olympus colleagues do use the uh, the webcam capture software, which is pretty good. But we've switched to and have been using for a very long time now. I can't show it to you because it's literally on Sam's desk, but it's one of these, uh, which is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. This is wonderful. This allows us to switch cameras. Sam, switch to my overhead camera. Here we go. Look at that. Overhead camera. There I am. Yay. Switch to my laptop. OK, so Sam can jump around on all of my different connections. We can have up to four different ones. Go back to the wide shot again. OK. Uh, go around all my different connections and we can connect them all together. So that is a little bit more of an advanced setting. It, oh, which camera am I? I'm on that one. <laughs> I'm looking up at this one. <laughs> uh, and it's really useful. So uh, yeah, get the Pro version, the A10 Mini Pro, if that's the route you want to go down. OK, how are we doing for questions, Sam? Are we OK? Yeah, we've got um, a couple, but I, I think you're going to get to this later. So um, Ivor asked, um, he's put, hi, your presentations come across as very well organized. How much preparation and rehearsal do you do? But I know that you're covering some of the content stuff a bit later. Thank you, Ivor. We're going to take that as a compliment, first of all. So that's, that's... <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and um, thanks for all the birthday wishes. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> OK, which brings me on to uh, the most important thing in my studio. It isn't actually the, the cameras or the computers or anything. It is Sam. Sam 
if you if you have access to your own version of a SAM, use it because you, you'll watch presentations on the, the the virtual photography show, and you'll see people trying to read the questions, talk to the camera, do the tech. It's really hard to do that and concentrate. So yeah, it looks more professional if you can subcontract some of your work out. That's why we do remote live uh, pr producing to get that work away from other people, and they can concentrate on that end of things and not the technology. OK, so that's the, the bit that people see. But it isn't actually the most important thing about live streaming. The internet is the most important. Once you get past that, the second most important thing for anybody watching your stream is audio. How you sound is way more important than how you look. People will tolerate really bad video. And it astonishes me just how bad people will tolerate. I'm, I'm quite intolerant, I guess, on that one, maybe. But bad audio, everybody will tune out very quickly. Let me demonstrate. OK, so if I come here and I, I do that, OK, that is bad video. That is the inside of my hand. It looks good, doesn't it? But you'll sit and watch this for, for some time, thinking, he'll come back in a minute. I'll keep watching. But if I switch my audio off, And that's the secret that you should never forget. No, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? You, you won't watch t TV. You wouldn't watch TV with the sound turned off. But you will listen to the radio without seeing the person at the other end. And that's what you have to think about. I say that, and I immediately think of my dad, who will watch the Tour de France with the sound turned off just to watch the pretty countryside. So with the exception of my dad and the Tour de France, normally people don't watch TV if the sound goes off. They change channel. So it's really important audio. And, and we're going to sort of demonstrate how this works. So at the moment, you're listening to uh, this little microphone way down here. It's a little microphone here, uh, which allows me to move around. This is a Rode radio microphone system. It gives me the freedom to move around my studio, to turn away from you, to sort of wander from one side to the other and still be the same audio level for you. Uh, and I can show you it's definitely this microphone, because if I, if I gently stroke it, that sounds absolutely terrible. Stop doing that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like someone buttering toast. Yeah. So um, you need to be careful where you position those. But they are really good for allowing you freedom of movement. In comparison, I'm going to pull the microphone out. This is a really bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. OK, so this is the microphones from the built-in camera microphones. So these are the Olympus microphones built right into the Olympus cameras, which I have to say are actually better than some microphones I've used. But hopefully you can hear the difference in quality. I probably sound a little less loud because the sound now has to travel all the way over to the camera, which is way over there. And if, obviously, if I decide I'm going to do something in the corner here, it's really going to be really horrible. So if you're at a distance or you're moving around, this is not good. You're not going to listen to this for long. If you're up close, it's perhaps not so bad. You'll tolerate this. This is OK. But if you're more dynamic, then you really want to switch back. I'm going to switch it back in again to this audio, which hopefully, if it's still working, Sam will give me the nod. Yeah, OK, that's, <laughs> that was a dangerous thing to do live. Uh, then uh, this is much better audio. So audio is, is really, really important. OK, so video is OK, but audio is absolutely king. And Sam has a question far away. Uh, we've had a few comments about um, uh, your birthday. Streaming. No, well, we've had those. Yeah. <laughs> so Keith said he uh, agreed totally about the audio. He does wildlife vlogs, and the audio is still so important. Um, Terry asked, "How do you sync audio and video lip sync?" That is a really good question, Terry. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the problems I had early on in a moment. But the, the simple answer is uh, to connect your audio into your camera. So the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and III have microphone in ports. So I've got a wireless pack here. There is a receiver on the other end. And I'll, I'll show you, actually. It's much easier, isn't it? So here we go. Um, how am I going to do this? Actually, if I just switch this camera on. Sam, can you switch to the Olympus over here? OK. Yeah, that's it. I'll get rid of the, the clock. There we go. OK, so I'll clean up the audio, uh, the video in a minute. But um, these are the little audio packs that I would buy today if I was buying them. These are the Comica Boom XDs, which we use for location work when we're doing 
multiple people together. These are little great uh, from Pixar Pro. We'll sell you a, a copy of these. Uh, they're really good. Uh, they have a receiver with this little wire here, and that plugs into the microphone in on my camera and then the body pack. And the reason I like those is simply, let's go back to the main camera again. Thanks. Uh, they're small, they're compact, and because you're plugging it straight into the camera, your audio is synced with the camera picture within a frame, within close enough for live streaming. If you're going to take your audio and mix it and then bring it in, that is a whole other world that is beyond the scope of this video. So the simple answer, Terry, plug your microphone into your camera. Job done. OK, any other questions? I'll keep going. Um, Lawrence said that he volunteers at a museum and he wants to do some live streaming of the restoring of aircraft. That sounds really interesting. That sounds very yeah. familiar, yeah. Uh, what mobile filming uh, and audio equipment would you suggest? OK, so if you're going mobile, uh, the first thing to check is your internet connection. OK, so we've been caught out like this before, where you go to a location and they say, yeah, we've got great internet. Uh, by the way, which reminds me, that's why I bought this. This is a 20 meter long. Um, Ethernet cable because they said their wireless was brilliant and their wireless was brilliant right up until they let the general public in and then it wasn't. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, connect up wired, check their speed before you go live. Uh, kit wise, the A10 Mini can be battery powered. So, using a VLOC battery, you can power it that way. If you want a completely portable system, take a look at the YOLO box. The YOLO box is quite an interesting little box of tricks that allows you to put a, a SIM card in so you can use your, your phone connection or your um, portable router. Um, yeah, YOLO box it looks like an interesting option for a completely portable system. OK, uh, right. So um, we were talking about cameras. Let's switch over to this camera here, Sam, to my Olympus camera. So this is my Olympus camera. Hello. <laughs> I realize I can't see you now because you're, you're down there somewhere. Oh, that works. OK. Um, so this is the Olympus camera. And as you can see, it is what I would see if I'm looking through the viewfinder, complete with all of the technical information. What I want to do is to show you how to clean all of this information off the screen. So you have what's called a clean HDMI out. That's the idea. So. Um, I was really close. I realized just how close I was sat to the screen. <laughs> That's really freaky. So let's clean this up and go through uh, the settings that I dial in to make my Olympus camera work for live streaming. So first of all, I'm going to dive into the menu, uh, not the menu, the super control panel, uh, which is that one there. And there's a whole bunch of settings that I can dial in. But what I'm going to dial in, first of all, is the continuous AF. OK, so make sure I'm on continuous autofocus. Obviously, if you're sat static at a desk, you could go for manual focus. That's probably a good idea, but I'm quite dynamic in my presentations, so I like to move around. OK, once I've done that, uh, I'm then going to change. Oh, this is really weird. Hang on a second, because this is so far behind. I can't see. There we go. Um, I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, let's just see. Hang on a second. I need to move this around. I wasn't expecting quite such a long delay. Right, OK, here we go. There we go. I've got this. OK, so uh, shutter priority mode or manual mode. I prefer shutter priority mode, again, if I'm dynamic and moving around. But if I've got fixed lighting like we have in here, I could just leave it on manual mode, which would make sense. Uh, next one down is going to be the data rate of your video. So this is really important for this. So what you need to do is to match your data rate, your, your video size to your output. Now, you're actually watching this at 720p, but my ATEM Mini, the thing that connects my camera to the internet, only works at 1080p. So I have to set this camera to 1080p, which is, it should be on already. Uh, let's just check. It is indeed on 1080p. And you'll also notice that it is on 30 frames per second. Now, this one is a bit of a gotcha. So with Olympus cameras, 30 frames per second is actually 29.97. And that doesn't sound like much. But if you get a mistake and you're using high-end equipment and you have set one to 29.97 and another one to 30, they will drift out of sync over time, which caught us out the first time we did it. So make sure you're aware of that. 30p on Olympus is actually 
29.97 frames per second. Okay, okay. that's that one. Uh, what else we got underneath there? Uh, underneath that one is uh, auto ISO. That's fine. I'm on shutter priority mode, and then face priority. Well, that's that's obviously, you know, that that's what you can see here. You can see the little uh, rectangle around my face. The autofocus ability of these cameras is fantastic. So those are my settings. How do I get rid of them so you can't see them anymore? Uh, well, I do that by diving into the menu, and into the menu, I'm going to go to the video settings and HDMI output, and on HDMI output, I will change the output mode from monitor mode, which is the default one, into not raw mode, that's something completely different, record mode. And in record mode, I come back out of, all the way out of this with a lovely clean HDMI output. There we are. So no longer can you see all of the information around the outside. You see a nice clean HDMI out. But if I go around the back of the camera, I can still see that information. That's tricky to do when you can't actually see it on the, the live feed, but I think we got there. That was pretty good. OK, so that's how I clean up my camera uh, for using as a live streaming camera so you see something nice and clean. OK, how are we doing, Sam? Are we OK? Yeah, now quite a few people are asking for repeats of things that you've done already. And also, is it available? So if you could just let them know. Is this going to be available yeah, afterwards? Yeah. I have no idea, yeah. is the honest answer. Uh, they are. <laughs> well, I, I did read up that they were going to be recording them and leaving them for 30 days. So if you've got access, which obviously you have if you're watching this now, then you should be able to go back in and rewatch them. I don't know where it will be in here. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to find it, though. If you just um, put in the search bar, Gavin Howie. OK, there you go. See, Sam, so, so useful. You, you need a Sam. It's, it's brilliant. All right. OK, so uh, that is pretty good. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've got 15 minutes to go. So we're OK. So I've actually got 13 minutes. 13 minutes to go. Oh, yeah, the little countdown timer. So that's very good. OK, so that's the technical side of things. We're going to cover very briefly for the last 10 minutes or so uh, a little bit about what do you do with this stuff. You, you set the technical up. Where do you go from here? So the first thing I'm going to say is it's really important that you know your audience. Now, my audience is you lot, fellow photographers, my, my photographic peers. But maybe you're a, uh, a wedding photographer or a wildlife photographer or you know, a social photographer. There's, there's all sorts of things you could be, but you've got to know where your audience are. When are they likely to watch a live stream? So I'm going to use the example of a wedding photographer because that's something I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with. There's no point doing a live stream at half past three on a Thursday if your audience aren't going to be there. You're much better off being at a weekend, maybe 6 o'clock on a Saturday or 10, 10 30 on a Saturday. My audience, 50% of my audience is in America. No point me being live in the mornings because they're asleep. So you have to think about what your audience and when they're likely to be watching. Then you've got to think about, well, what are you going to do? What on earth can you do? So let me give you some examples if you're a wedding photographer of live streaming content. For me, it's easy. I'm a photographer. I can just do photography. But if I was a wedding photographer, I couldn't really do a live shoot and have anybody interested in that. And I'm not sure I'd want to stream a wedding live. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. But we could do a live stream about your top three shots that you always take, your personal unique shots, your top three, your, uh, your, what you do on a location shoot. Okay, what happens before you go actually to the wedding? Things that the bride and groom don't see. Uh, your favorite shots from a recent wedding. That's a pretty obvious one, isn't it? Okay, for recent wedding, here's some pictures. Um, why you shoot the small stuff? Wedding photographers, we always take pictures of the, the details. I say we, I haven't done it for years. Wedding photographers always do the, the detail pictures. Why do you do that? Bride and groom spend ages thinking about the small stuff. Why is that important to them and important to you? That's a great little topic for you to go through. There's interviews. Interviews are great. For interviews, we use StreamYard. StreamYard is an online service that allows you to bring multiple people into the stream without the technology of having to do what you're watching here. There's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes that you don't have to worry about. With StreamYard, it does it for you. Uh, interview florists, locations, videographers, fellow photographers, but not from your area. Get a different perspective. Uh, and 
former brides, former clients, bring them in for a live stream. Those are all great little contents. And then there's always the Q and A's. This stuff should be interactive. Live streaming shouldn't be an alternative to recording a video and just talking at a camera. It needs to have some sort of interaction with your audience, absolutely critical. Saying that, Sam, is there any interaction with the audience? Yeah, there's a couple of uh, questions. Um, Terry asked, um, what continuous lighting are you using? Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, I'm using the, the Spiffy Gear Luminar. I wonder if I can point my camera at it, actually, because we never actually put it on normally. Let's just see. Uh, yeah, can you switch to my Olympus camera, Sam? Oh, well done, she's done it already. There we go. So up there, um, there's Sam. There's my lighting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're using the Spiffy Gear Luminar uh, LED lights from Pixar Pro. So I have them set up like that, which gives a, effectively like a, a strip box. Uh, they're really bright and really continuous, and they don't have a fan, so they're also silent. Right, back to me. Cool. Uh, so uh, what are we going to do? OK, um, so here's a, here's a thing. What do you do if nobody is watching? So when you started off, when we started off our first Olympus live stream, bearing in mind we had the whole weight of Olympus UK plus my little social media following, we had, I think it was 350 thereabouts sign up for the session. That was March, April last year. The most recent one we did for Olympus, we had 1,200 people sign up. So over the course of a year, it's now three or four times bigger than it was before. So the, the difference is, really growing, um, not rapidly, it's taken a year to get to that point. When you start, you can expect maybe one person, and that's probably your mum, tuning in. What do you do? Is it worth it? Should you just forget it and just say, well, it's not worth my effort to speak to one person? No, it is. So here's what we do. We make sure that the content that we produce live can be used in other areas. So it's not a case of making the content and then forgetting about it. It's a matter of making the content and then reusing it. And bearing in mind, these talks take time. So we plan and plan and plan and plan and plan. So the one you're watching now, I've been talking probably for a best part of a day, going through it in my head, setting up the equipment last night and planning it for weeks in advance. So there's a lot of stuff that you don't see. And then, of course, you start talking and you forget all of the things you were going to say anyway. So that's, that's just how it goes. So to make this work, to make it actually payable uh, in a, a business point of view, recycle it. So there's a bunch of things you can do. Uh, for me, I'm taking photos normally as part of my sessions, so I can put those on social media. Great, I had an opportunity to social media my shots. Uh, we, we take the video, I take my live stream, heavily edit out all the stuff that isn't relevant to a live audience, and make YouTube videos out of that. So a condensed version goes on my YouTube channel. You can make little snippets and put them on Instagram. There's all sorts of things you can do with your content to recycle it. Uh, you can make a blog post out of it. If it's an interview like this, where there's not really much to see, you can make a podcast out of it. All sorts of ways you can recycle it. You could um, make it pay by putting um, affiliate links in. So if you want to go down that route, you could become an affiliate partner and put links into the gear that you're using. Uh, you, this is effectively your, your virtual business card. Think of it like this. Back to the wedding photographers. You're going to be pointing the wedding photographers to this, uh, the, your potential bride, sorry, to this and saying, here's me. Here's my personality. Here's what I do. You can get a feel for whether we're a good fit long before we have to go and do uh, an actual meeting. And of course, meetings are virtual. So this is also great training for your next online meeting where you're going to be pitching yourself to your potential clients. So we do all sorts of things like that. OK, Sam, we are down to my end. So uh, any questions? Yeah, there's one about um, uh, the camera. This is Colin. How do you power the EM1 Mark II for longer while live streaming? Oh, that's such a good question. Uh, Colin, that was a really good question. Um, so we use a tether tools. Let me get the right name. I can't. Uh, oh, I can show you. I can. Uh, oh, if I, oh. Uh, yeah, this should be fun. I don't really want to pull the plug on this one. Um, <laughs> we use a tether tools case relay. I was trying to get it up, but I have to unplug it, and I just it should be fine. But on a live, you just don't want to do that stuff like that. So we use a tether tools case relay, which has like a little fake battery that goes into the battery compartment. 
with Olympus cameras, the battery door doesn't have to be on for the battery to still function. The door is there just for weather sealing, really. So uh, we plug that in. It plugs into the USB port of my little power brick down there, and it will run all day continuously. It's brilliant. Case relay from Tether Tools. We've got just five minutes. Okay. Try get... Yeah, we've got, we got five. Have we got another question? Or are well, we... There's a few. Go for it. Go on. Um, I've, got, I've got two minutes at the end. So yeah. Fine. Oh, okay. So this is from Ian. Uh, you've got the stream to the computer. How does the viewer see it? Okay, so uh, once you've got your stream into the computer, you then need some software. We use something called OBS, Open Broadcast Software. It's a free piece of software. It will then send that to Facebook uh, or YouTube or whatever. Uh, you could use um, something like StreamYard if you want to get going really easily and you don't want to spend another penny, StreamYard do a free version with their logo in the corner, but it's it's well worth a try. Literally, it's like just running a webcam. It's so, so simple to, to use. Um, there are things like vMix that you're watching now that the photography show is using. Ecamm, if you're on a Mac version, is the same sort of thing. Those are both payable bits of software. Uh, we're cheapskates, so we use OBS. OK. Right, so there we go. Um, that's going to bring me to the end. And I promised in my description I would pass on my three golden rules. So if you're getting uh, joining me now and you just want to know, OK, what are the three rules? Forget the rest. What are the three most important rules? Here they come. And these are rules I've learned the painful, hard way. So the first rule is to plan, 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 and be spontaneous when you go live. OK, so plan everything. Plan what's going to happen. What are you going to be doing at the beginning? How are you going to end your live session? Plan it as much as you can. But when you hit go live, be prepared to be spontaneous. Interact with your audience. Planning, I should say, also means that I have backups. Backup cables, backup cameras, backup batteries, all part of the planning. Tip number two of my golden rules is, of course, check your internet before you go live. Just run a quick speed test, just to be absolutely sure that you know you haven't suddenly started backing up your your cloud storage at that moment in time. It's happened. I've seen it. Or all of a sudden, they, the BT haven't started digging up the box outside the road. And before you go live, practice using your phone as a tethered hotspot as a backup. Okay, so check your internet. Rule number two, and then number three, and most important rule by far is. Keep going as if everybody is watching. You can't tell when you're live. You get a little number in the corner, but you can't see whether that is a number of people who have clicked on it and then walked away and are now doing the washing up or, or whatever. Keep going. Imagine that everybody is watching, even if nobody is watching whatsoever. Because the one person that does watch it, they might be the person that hires you down the road. Just, just pretend that the whole world is watching. It really is the best way to go. When it comes to looking at your stats, you'll find that your numbers will go up and down. People will probably spend no more than five minutes maximum watching your stream before they disappear off. That's fine. Your numbers will start low and progress up. That's fine. And they will tail off after about 45 minutes. Just keep going as if everybody was watching. OK, there you go. That brings me to the end of my little presentation for Olympus UK. Uh, I'll be back on again tomorrow, where we're going to be having a little group discussion. I'll be part of that. So join me tomorrow afternoon. Have we got any questions, Sam, whilst I'm wrapping up? Uh, there were a few probably that I missed, but I've got to as many as we could as we well go done. through, because we are on a, a we have, we have one yeah, minute, 30 on seconds. the clock, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Thanks to everyone for their comments and joining in today. So there's a lot of people on there really interested in this stuff. So. You know, um, perhaps it's something we could do some training. Uh, yes. You know, a little bit more, maybe yeah. a webinar or something. If anyone's interested, um, let us know. Get in, in touch. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. OK, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks to Olympus UK for allowing me to come and speak on their behalf. So thank you again for that. And the photography show for well putting this all together. So whatever you're doing this weekend, hope you enjoy the virtual photography show. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.